crucial third race. I'll tell you why it's crucial, because five scores out of six actually count per team. USA at the moment, there is James Bubba Stewart. The USA at the moment are on 13 points. New Zealand, OK, they're second on 31, but look how many Estonian flags there are flying out there. Isn't that amazing? The New Zealand are second on 31, but if you take away Cody Cooper's 17 points, that puts them on 14. If you take away Italy's 16 points for Christian Beji, that puts them on 18. If you take away France's 19 points for Yves de Maria, that puts them on 26. If you take away Belgium's 33, after Kevin Strybos fell while Lisman did such great work in the closing stages to snatch fourth place, that puts the Belgians on 16. But of those teams, I would suggest that the guys who've got two really front runners out in the final race are the USA and Belgium. That man, Josh Coppins, we just glimpsed. The Lizard hasn't really got speed on his side in terms of his teammate, Cody Cooper. Cody Cooper, who's uh, the reigning New Zealand champion, not quite having the international pace to live with these guys. So Stuart Tedesco, good team. Belgium, Ramon and Everts, Ramon needs the start. France, Porcel De Mario, De Mario the weak link. New Zealand, Coppins Cooper, Cooper the weak link. South Africans have Neville Bradshaw out alongside Wyatt Avis. Narita and Atsuta for Japan. They're fighting for the, the Japanese championship. They're only two points apart right now. But really, it's all down to the Americans to lose this. If they make a mess of race three, then we could end up with someone other than the United States of America winning the 60th annual Motocross of Nations. It's not likely. Nearest the camera, number 37, David Philippats, who is on the 450cc Open Class KTM, but of course he will be moving onto the Open Class with KTM. So this is a dry run for him and 2007, with of course his new team boss, none other than Stefan Everts. Look at little Bubba Stewart beside him, dwarfed by the tall Belgian Italian. This is going to be a crucial start. This is such a critical start. Whoever comes out in the first two or three in the first turn could really stop their authority on this race and indeed on this team championship. Oh, Bubba Stewart gets blocked off the start. Stewart gets rammed back by the broad shoulders of David Philippart and he tucks in up the inside just behind Steve Ramon on the 450 Suzuki. So what an intriguing start that was and I thought that Philippart might have got it. And Philip Hartz did. He got a blazing start. Ramon's in there ahead of Stefan Everts. That's what the Belgians needed, a good start. Oh, it's a traffic jam. It's a traffic jam. Number 12 in the rook there was Cody Cooper. He got a decent start, but was getting blocked a bit. And what about number 13, Billy McKenzie? Billy Mack, the six-foot-two-inch Scotsman from Long Nidri, just outside Edinburgh. Third in the British MX2 Championship, destined to race for Dekrut Kawasaki in the MX1 World Championships in 2007, has catapulted out of the gate on the bike at Dixon 450 Yamaha. He's there in second place behind David Philippard. So two of the MX2 stars moving on to 450s. Two tall men, more suited perhaps to the bigger bikes, are there at the front. And behind them, look at that, number 10, Josh Coppins gets the start that he needs on the Cass Honda for New Zealand. Oh, Philip Hart's in a mess. Mackenzie tries to get alongside and take advantage. The crowd are going nuts. It's the first time we've had a Brit near the front all day. David Philip Hart moves across and blocks Mackenzie. Oh, Billy's so desperate to get through. Wow, and the two Belgians are there. The two Belgians are right there as Mackenzie runs just a little wide into the first turn, what becomes the, uh, the first turn as they head out into their first full lap. Stefan Everts has moved past Steve Ramon. So Everts, Yamaha, ahead of Ramon, Suzuki, both of them riding for Belgium. They need good results. Kevin Strybos let them down big style in the second race. Josh Coppins, New Zealand need the results. Can Cody Cooper hang in and give them a well-deserved rostrum finish? And one of the Kawasaki's, I think possibly one of the Americans, is trying to nose, and that, that would be James Stewart trying to nose in front as Billy Mack takes the lead. Mackenzie is at the front, riding lucky 13. Billy Mackenzie has taken the lead. Can he hang on to it? 
what a great start for his Open MX1 career. Mackenzie gets the power down. Philip Arts gets the power down. Philip Arts is a fighter, though. He comes back at Mackenzie. The 21-year-old David Philip Arts, the 22-year-old oh, Billy Mack. Tedesco is back in ninth place. Mackenzie having a rip-snorting battle. Remember, this has got to go 30 minutes plus two laps. And we're at the tracks at its roughest. It's had three tough races on it, including the B final at 11 o'clock this morning. Stefan Evert is trying to nose back his way past Josh Coppins, the man who did for him at Desert Martin in Northern Ireland and prevented him scoring his 100th Grand Prix victory there. Didn't matter, he did it a week later in Lerop. Oh, elbow to elbow with the man who will be taking over his Yamaha ride next year. And the Stars and Stripes are out in support of James Stewart and Ivan Tedesco. Stewart's there in fifth place. Ramon says you have to be ahead of Ramon now. He's done the job. Sebastian Porcel, the 21-year-old older of the French brothers. Oh, Mackenzie makes a big mistake. Completely loses drive and loses two places as he turns just a little too tight and gets out of shape in the left-hander. But he comes straight back to try and make a move under Stefan Everts. Can't quite make it stick. James Stewart is there in fifth place. What a fantastic shindig this is here at Matterley Basin. Motocross of Nations. Spectacular world team action. Oh, Josh Coppins trying to go right round the outside of Philip Arts, and Philip Arts squeezes the door shut on him. No, he doesn't. Oh, Philip Arts riding with the sort of a dash and enthusiasm that's going to make him surely a presence in MX1 next year. Stefan Everts and James Bubba Stewart are now ahead of Billy McKenzie. Number one, Stewart. Oh, what a race. Already what a race. KTM versus Honda at the front. The Italian, David Philippats, on KTM, ahead of Josh Coppins. Both of them so dependent on what their colleagues are doing further downfield. I then take my eyes off them to find out. Cody Cooper's in 20th place for New Zealand. It's way short of good enough. Ramon's in sixth, backing up Everts in third. And uh, the other Italian, can't even see him in the top 20. Christian Beji, star of the MX2. For, he's in 32nd place. So uh, the Italians and the New Zealanders suffering right now with uh, people way downfield. It's not going to help these guys at the pointed end. Stefan Everts finding himself once again, hammer and tongs with his uh, great rival, the 29-year-old Kiwi. Josh Coppins. Philip Hides, Coppins, Everts, the battle for the lead. And it's four-way now because James Stewart's in there. They've just slightly gapped McKenzie, and then they're followed by Sebastian Porcel, number four, who was in storming form on the 450 Kawasaki. Another man, of course, who's changing from MX2 to MX1 next year. I think MX1's going to be a brilliant competition in 2007. Partly because that man goes, but partly because there's some strong fast men coming up from MX2 to challenge that man number 10, Josh Coppins. Tedesco's 8th, Barragan 9th, Tunnel Leoc 10th, Carl Nunn 11th as the second British rider ahead of Yoshiat Suter and Wyatt Avis. Fastest man on track on the last lap was James Stewart with a 2 minutes 9.225 second lap as once again Coppins tries to line up Philip Hertz. Coggins, of course, made his return halfway through the season from that serious shoulder dislocation he suffered. Oh, he's gone down! Coppins goes down. He made his return and got on the rostrum, but he's gone down, and that's a crucial moment for New Zealand as Coppins lost the front wheel and drove himself into the ground. So the, the man who lost his British Open Championship two weeks ago to Ken De Dijker, his teammate at CAS Honda, drops the 450 Honda. Stefan Evans glances over his shoulder, and what he'll find is that behind him is uh, the exuberant figure of James Stewart. Oh, dear me, this is fascinating. So Stewart's in there, Billy McKenzie in there, Sebastian Porcel, Steve Ramon. 
What a great sight here, Matley Basin. This is a huge area, so that to have this density of crowd around such an enormous space just gives you some idea of the 40,000-plus fans who've turned out from all over. They've arrived from all over Europe and beyond. There's a good contingent of American supporters as well, and uh, it looks like possibly even with having, without having a race win that they could be the guys who take the overall victory. 16 to the USA, 23 to Belgium now. 56 to South Africa. But of course, there are scores to be dropped. That's a crucial fact. Number four, Sebastian Porcel, ahead of number nine, Steve Ramon. Ramon is uh, not really holding up his end for Belgium as uh, Everts, the close to 34-year-old, battles for the lead and knows that James Bubba Stewart, the stocky Floridian, is not far behind on that Kawasaki. Number 37. So I say, oh, look at that. Stefan Everts leaned on by James Stewart. He tried to lean back on Bubba, but it didn't work. Bubba just had the edge on him, and he pushed underneath. Now, Everts, of course, he's not used to... Wow, he just retaliates. No, he doesn't. Bubba manages to get the drive back. But Everts isn't used to that sort of aggression. The youngsters have been a bit overawed by him this year in MX1. He's not used to people cutting underneath him like that and just attempting to take his foot pegs from under his feet. <laughs> so Bubba Stewart, he's looking to at least get an American on the top deck of an individual race here as Everts goes for the inside line and drops into it. But Bubba Stewart is so aggressive and he finds the inside rut again into the next turn. And this is Everts being shown what it's like to get some really attacking, forceful aggression thrown at him. Bubba Stewart, whose assault on the American National Championship was crucified, really, by a couple of massive crashes, which he thankfully survived in one piece. But he's proving just how fast he can be on the big four-stroke Kawasaki. Now, David Philippard, who, of course, is a relative novice. The tall, angular, handsome Italian riding the Red Bull champ KTM, but Bubba's looking for some way in. Bubba Stewart, who you'll notice is smaller than you think of him. You're dead. You don't tend to think of him as being a small guy, but he's a little fella. He looks quite dwarfed by that Kawasaki, but it's Stefan Everts who's feeling the, the sting of the Kawasaki's roost right now on that Yamaha. Josh Coppins is down in 14th place behind Mark Ristori, so suddenly New Zealand's chances have absolutely collapsed. Oh, what a shame. They looked in really good shape for getting themselves on the rostrum. Not any longer. Philip Arts leads it for Italy. Stewart second for the USA. Everts third for Belgium. Porcel fourth for France. Ramon fifth for Belgium. And Tedesco sixth for the USA. That's a vital ride. If he ends up with two sixth places, they only have to drop six points, then uh, that's going to mean that they've cakewalked the event and gone into a clear lead with 17 victories. Remember, they only won their first one in 1981, which was like 34 years into the history of the event. But then they won 13 on the trot. They won again in 1996, in 2000 and in 2005. They are the defending champions. Roger de Costa. The man, of course, was a Belgian legend before he went off, and already an American legend before he had landed on American shores at the end of 1980 to become boss of Honda America's racing activities. Oh, look at how close and fast these two guys swapping by. Oh, Everts, where did he pull that from? Feet pinned, he goes on the outside of James Stewart. Wow. Oh, what a pass. Stewart, though, instantly responds. Look how aggressive the American is. Always looking for that inside rut. And if he can't get the inside rut, he'll make his own. He's back in front. And David Philippart is somehow holding on ahead of these guys. The last lap, two in it, 8.9 to 8.8 to 9.0. That's how close it is amongst these three. But Philip Arts must be wary because right now, if James Bubba Stewart just gets claws his way away from Stefan Everts and can focus on challenging Philip Arts, then that will be spelled danger for the KTM rider. 
Steve Ramon just behind them. He set the fastest lap of the race on the last lap with a 2 minutes 8.0. His fastest lap of the race. Everts once again surges round the outside of James Bubba Stewart. What fabulous racing. This is what we wanted to see. Europe versus the USA. And what tantalisingly different styles. The new and most feared whiz kid on the block in the USA, James Stewart, against the man who has become an absolute world and Grand Prix legend, Stefan Everts. And Everts is now setting his sights on David Philippards. He knows that the route to safety, surely, is to get himself to the front. Oh, Stefan comes up just uh, a little short on the on the long table top then, because with having uh, Philippards just in front of him also running up a bit short, you've got to be a bit careful and canny. <laughs> oh, look at this. And Steve Ramon crosses the line. He has closed right on this trio with his fastest lap. But, of course, has he got that aggression? Can he learn from Bubba Stewart ahead of him and think, oh, right, that's the way to attack people and get past them? Must give it a try. Here comes uh, Stefan Everts. He launches his way past number 37, David Philippards. Now, Philippards pushed to second place. Belgium, one point for the win. Four points for fourth right now. Philippards comes back. But the leader getting saluted by this crowd, this international crowd, Stefan Everts. Oh, there's a lapper already just about pulling up, anchoring up and getting well out of the way. Number 43, Julian Bill on the bike at Dixon Yamaha. Swiss champion having a, a poor day for the promoter Steve Dixon. And here comes Bubba Stewart. He's regrouped, he's launched his way past. Fastest man on the track on that lap was uh, Jonathan Barrigan in sixth place now for Spain. Oh, Josh Coppins has moved back to 12th. Nunny's in 10th place. Billy McKenzie has dropped to 9th behind Ivan Tedesco because Barrigan and Tannel Leoc of Estonia have launched themselves through to 6th and 7th place behind Sebastian Porcel. They're all in the picture there. There's Ramon. There's Sebastian Porcel. Porcel is going fast. 2 minutes 8.9 against Barrigan on 2 minutes 8.7 behind him. Barron, of course, Barrigan, of course, will be teammates with number 37. David Philippertz in the MX1 KTM factory team under the watchful eye of Stefan Everts in 2007. Well, what the heck's happening on the... As far as scores are concerned, it's got everything at the moment. has just got to favour the Americans because they haven't got a duff score. The score that they're able to drop right now is Ivan Tedesco, the New Mexico rider in eighth place right now that's as many as they have to drop whereas everybody else has got a fairly colossal downfield score to get shot of and the so-called mx3 world champion Yves de Marier has just moved up to 25th place well, i'll tell you what i don't think he's going to do the french and that man number four sebastian porcel a lot of good they're going to have to count one of his scores which at the moment is about 19th no, but Sebastian no, no, Porcel, no, no, how good is Porcel looking? He's looking forward to being a, a member of the MX1 assault squad in 2007. It's going to be a cracking series. Barrigan, Tunnel, Leoc, Tedesco, McKenzie and none have all set their fastest lap times on that but last lap. <laughs> Amazing. So Carl Nunn trying to claw his way past Billy McKenzie at number nine. And that's Steve Ramon, tries to find his way back into the top three. He's attacking David Philippats. He's got to attack him harder. But also, he's been pushed by Porcel. Sebastian Porcel was so furious at being dropped from the French team in favour of Mikhail, the semi-retired Mikhail Pichon that he rode in his MX Donations gear at the final round of the World Championships just a, year, just a week ago to show his disapproval. But, of course, Pichon washed out off the start, somewhat over-enthusiastic, uh, face-planted himself, bust his nose, put himself out of this event. So Sebastian was um, coyly invited back in by team manager Olivier Robert. Well, it's probably a good idea that he did invite him back in because look at the way the guy's riding. France, of course, runners-up last year. David Villemang, Sebastian Tortelli and Michael Pichon at Ernay. But Porcel it is now who's applying pressure to these two. Everts has a lead of about 1.2 seconds and he's just set his best lap time of 2 minutes 8.76 seconds. 
Oh, oh, a huge moment for the 2003 125 world champ, Steve Bomber Ramon. Oh, he nearly bombed himself out of the race at that moment. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, and uh, I don't think that's James Stewart, thankfully, on a Kawasaki, frantically trying to kickstart the green machine. That was James Stewart who just flew through the picture. Ramon, always tidy at getting high up the adverse cambers. But takes a very, very wide line here. He's looking to uh, eject himself fast out of the right-hander, but he's left himself too big a gap to attack Philip Hartz there. Eight laps complete, a 1.9 second lead for Stefan Everts in the battle, the Euro-American battle at the front. Leoc ahead of Tedesco, McKenzie in ninth. Coppins has moved through to tenth now at the expense of Carl Nunn. Yoshia Tsuda having a good ride, enjoying himself back on European soil. The former Japanese champion rode for Harry Ains with CAS Honda team for a couple of years. 28 years old now. Had a terrible, uh, made a, a terrible start to his Grand Prix career when he both, he broke his thigh at Valkenswaard at the opening uh, Grand Prix of his career. But he came back to finish top 10 in the world. But Yoshi now back riding those riding that Japanese championship at the age of 28 now, leading the MX1 Japanese championship from Nar Akira Narita with two races to go. He also raced, of course, for Motivision Suzuki. Look at this. The unmistakable style of Stefan Everts. Can he hang it together? Joel Robert, the man who inspired the kid, as well, of course, as his dad, who won four world titles himself, Harry Everts. Joel Robert a former winner with Belgium of course of the motocross of nations now the Belgian team manager back in 1969 at Farley Castle in Great Britain the Belgians were with the winners and uh, Joel Robert and Roger de Costa now opposing captains of teams here were of course members of that great Belgian team alongside uh, Tuisson and Sylvain Gabors, who's now the Suzuki Grand Prix road race, uh, motocross racing boss. Talking about road racing, he said, look at this, he's getting excited, isn't he? Oh dear, Joel knows that James Stewart's coming again. Uh, excited people trackside, some of the, the best road racers uh, in the United Kingdom. The recently crowned British Super Sport champion, Cal Crutchlow, and his mate Craig Jones, a world superbike rider, alongside the uh, veteran world superbike star and recent race winner Chris Walker. Stalker, who loves his motocross, has dragged the two youngsters along with him to enjoy this weekend. John McGuinness, uh, multi, multiple TT winner, holder of the lap record on the Isle of Man in the Tourist Trophy, winner of the senior TT earlier this year. McGinley's here, because he loves his off-road as well. And so too is uh, Jonathan Ray, a leading... Okay contender in the British Superbike Championship with the Red Bull Honda team. He arrived, uh, got a flight in from Belfast very late on Friday night. It's great to see because the uh, the off-road guys... Uh, the situation oh, here's Roger is pretty safe for USA. What is your suggestion to James right now to try to pass uh, Stefan or just uh, to keep the position like yeah, that? The main thing is uh, to finish uh, and not screw up, you know. Uh, if all we need is fifth place now to win overall. So it would be nice, you know, it's nice to see a good battle and it would be nice to beat Stefan, but that's secondary. The first thing is to, to win at the nation. Yeah, you guys had a very good start in the first two motors, but in this one, not so good. Did you have any concern after that? No, I know that uh, James could come back, you know, He's, he passes good and uh, so I was not too concerned. The main thing, uh, he was not on the ground in the first turn. So. Thank you very much. Yeah, Roger de Costa, he doesn't look 62, does he? Bless him, he won't like me for saying it. He won his first motocross de Nation with Belgium here at, in the Great Britain at Farley Castle, Wiltshire in 1969, and then he won again at Norg in the Netherlands in 1972, and again the following year at Wallen in Switzerland, and then in 1976, St. Antonis in the Netherlands, 1977 at Cognac in France, and finally, in 1979, the first motocross to nations that I ever went to at Ruskia Santa in Finland. He was, uh, a ra he was uh, in the winning team, which is a, the winning team was led by uh, two dashing third places for Harry Everts, Stefan Everts' dad, alongside Andre Malherbe and Roger de Costa. So Roger de Costa 
winning six times with Belgium and of course countless times as the team manager of the USA. David Philippartz is there in third place still, fourth Steve Ramon, not yet succeeded in getting past, in fact 1.2 seconds astern of number 37, the tall Italian now. Jonathan Barrigan through to fifth place ahead of Sebastian Porcel, Barrigan piling up the calls. I think he might want to get past this guy who is uh, his KTM teammate in MX1 next year. Cody Cooper's improved to 14th place, a good ride for Cody Cooper for New Zealand, the 22-year-old from Opatiki. Finished runner-up to Josh Coppins in the 250 class in the New Zealand Championships. Won the National MX2 crown for the first time, beating Daryl King, the older of the two King brothers, uh, in 2003. Riding for Honda Australia, Cody Cooper won the MX2 class in Australia in 2004 and the New Zealand MX2 class in 2005. So he's not really a big bike man, so he's really riding a feisty race. He's into 14th place ahead of Jussi Bevelainen and Antti Piranen, the two Finns tied together. In fact, Piranen has just gone past Bevelainen as we watch the battle between the two KTMs. Look at this. Obviously, in, obviously inspired by the goings-on at the Ryder Cup World Team Golf Championships. This is Jonathan Barrigan on the right, attacking... David Philippart's on the left. Oh, Barrigan taking a huge outside line, and I think it might have worked. Oh, clever boy. Both these guys say they've benefited hugely from the experience of five-time world champion Georges Bay as advisor to the KTM Grand Prix squad in 2006. But, of course, George is disappearing now. So, too, the great Case van der Ven. 18 times a Grand Prix winner to be replaced by Stefan Everts. Well, I suppose if you're going to replace two guys of that calibre with somebody, then Stefan Everts, you're not going to get much finer than that. So they'll be benef benefiting from the 10-time world champion's advice next season. Meanwhile, here, Everts still has a lead of about 2.7 seconds. And he's still lapping just a little faster. Well, he certainly did on the last lap two-tenths of a second faster than uh, Jimmy Stewart. So James Stewart second, Philip Pratt's third, Barragan fourth. Tedesco is still in eighth place ahead of Billy McKenzie by about six seconds. United States on 15 points, Belgium on 23, New Zealand and Italy at the moment tied on 38. Oof. And I presume that the best of the last race, the better last race score might count, which would put Italy to the forefront, with Philip Hertz presently in fourth place, Josh Coppins down in tenth between Mackenzie and Carl Nunn. James Stewart, it's all very well, uh, a man of the vast experience of Roger de Costa saying, well, really, it's the team that matters, but I've got a feeling that this fella, the first African-American to win a major motorsports championship of any kind in the world, would uh, sincerely like to be putting one over Stefan Everts. But perhaps he has just relaxed a bit, perhaps he's just knocked the pace back, and this is actually James Stewart taking it steady. And he, has, he did, in fact, lap... As, uh, Stefan Evans has just said his fastest lap of the race. What is the man like? Mercurial. He's opened up the gap to 5.2 seconds. He lapped in 2 minutes 7.24 against James Stewart's 2 minutes 8.28. Jonathan Barrigan, 2 minutes 7.7, .7, is trying to close the gap now on James Stewart. 11 laps apiece gone, so we've got just under 4 minutes plus 2 laps of this increasingly rugged circuit at Matterley Basin. Number 52, Jan Zaremba of the Czech Republic, keeping out of the way there of number 37, David Filipas. Look how rutted this is getting. You wonder how these guys can travel this fast in energy-sapping, wheel-snatching ruts like these. Fantastic performance. Filipas back in front of Jonathan Barrigan. So Filipas is certainly proving to be uh, a strong performer in his first international ride on the 450cc factory KTM and I think that's crucial if he's back into third place and uh, Barrigan what's happened to Barrigan we might have lost him
Sebastian Porcel goes through in fourth place for France. Barrigan's there in fifth. And Barrigan had a big moment on that lap. He went, his lap, tap, his lap time dropped by about 14 seconds on that lap. Tedesco is still there in eighth. That eighth place actually doesn't matter. It can be dropped. Mackenzie ninth, that counts. Coppins tenth counts. Nunn eleventh counts. C Cody Cooper fourteenth counts. And in fact, what a good that gallant ride by Cooper means in, that really that unfortunate mistake early in this race when he was running at the front by Josh Coppins and the CS Honda will have dearly cost New Zealand. I think probably cost them their third ever Rostrum finish. Behind David Philippart, Sebastian Porcel should be next up. Oh, we've got a few guys playing games first. There is Porcel, and there right behind him is Steve Ramon, trying to find a way through on the Suzuki. France versus Belgium. Thirteen laps complete for Stefan Everts. And number 16, Tannel Leoch has emerged into the frame as well. And all those Estonian flags, the ones that I wasn't sure of the identity of, till it suddenly sunk into me, will be uh, waving even harder for the former international British Masters champion, Tannel Leoch, as Steve Ramon plunges through to snatch fourth place from Sebastian Porcel, number four. Number 16, Tannel Leoch wants to follow suit. Barrigan's now back behind these guys. Billy McKenzie's wakened up with his best lap of the race so far, even though it's getting rougher. And we're in amongst the back markers. They need to get out of the way quick. Blue flags are waving. Met the MX1 rider for Portugal, Paula Gonzalez, Goncalves rather, has just got lapped. Number nine, Steve Ramon wants to at least assure, uh, ensure that Belgium are on the rostrum. He's now in fourth place. Fifth, Tannel Leoc. Sixth, Sebastian Porcel. Then the battle of the backmarkers before Barrigan, Tedesco, Mackenzie and Josh Coppins round out the top ten. And Coppins, and the reason that... Uh, the reason that Billy McKenzie has responded is Josh Coppins is right behind him, but he put in a quicker lap then and pulled a couple of tents back on the New Zealander. Tannel Leoch, well, he's had to come out of the pack in both his races, the Estonian Express. The 21-year-old Baker's son from the Baltic state. Riding for De Groot Kawasaki. He won't be Sebastian Porcel's teammate in 2007, but they'll have pretty identical weaponry in the MX1 class. And here they are, soaring together through this English air. Yves de Maria has reached 16th place. A oh, heady, eh? And uh, in the lead, Stefan Everts. Second place, James Stewart. Everts has just gone round even faster. Everts has just done 2 minutes 6.369 as Joel Rebeir watches the battle between Steve Ramon and Tanner Leoc. Leoc's coming through on the inside. He's more aggressive than Ramon. You'd always side with Tanner Leoc in a tussle like this. But, uh, oops, I was going to say Ramon's going to show him a clean pair of Suzuki heels, but not quite. Mackenzie then clinging on ahead of Josh Coppins. And Stewart's also said his fastest lap of the race with a 2 minute 7.3, just a second slower than Stefan Everts at the moment, 6.1. He's uh, 5.4 seconds behind the leader. Leoc's now through. A popular figure, the curly-haired Estonian on British soil. Probably because he's so ragged, actually. We love watching him. Look at this, the cool, smooth, poised David Philippartz for Italy. Two laps to go. I think Philippartz might have done enough to bring a rostrum finish Italy's way. 
but they're, till, they're still tied with New Zealand. It needs, I think the difference would be if Coppins, oh, Tedesco's gone 10th, Mackenzie comes through 8th, Coppins in 9th, Ivan Tedesco, he's done his job for the day, and he's blown it now, he's back into 10th place. Sebastian Porcel behind Tanner Leoc, so too is Steve Ramon. But Mackenzie versus Coppins is absolutely crucial. There's one second between them. If Josh Coppins could grab that eighth place, he'd grab a rostrum finish for the New Zealanders. Well, oh, how crucial is that? How cruel will it be if he doesn't make it? Everts has gone faster and faster. How's he done that? Two minutes, 6.3 seconds. His best lap time in lap 14. He's now completed 14 laps. He's on to his last lap. And the crowd are cheering them as much as they've ever... They're cheering him on as much as they've ever cheered him before. Turns 34 on the 25th of November. The man from Brie, Dilson Stocken in Belgium, now resident, of course, and uh, very happy with his lady Kelly and his son Liam in Monte Carlo. And I tell you what, once this weekend is over he'll be able to relax a bit he'll be able to relax that astonishing regime and be able to just let go a little bit of that motivation until of course the western beach race on october the 22nd when he'll be right there like the sand fly that he is having a ball and you'll have tyler rattray and joel smets to deal with as well Belgian flags waving for Stefan Everts. He's not going to take home a Belgian trophy, but he is going to take home his second victory of the day. So a remarkable contest coming to a close now. And Billy McKenzie's job rate. Coppins is through to eighth place. Ahead of Tedesco. McKenzie's had a two-minute, 20-second penultimate lap. Something went wrong for the Scotsman on that lap. And I think that the lizard, Josh Coppins, might have recovered sufficiently to snatch a podium place for the Kiwis. Well, would you believe it? All the way over at the other side of the world, they could be headed for their third rostrum behind the USA and Belgium. Their third rostrum finish in MX de Nation history. Wonderful. Let's hope the maths are right. Stefan Everts wins the third race. Yet again, proves just how good he is. James Stewart in second place. Stefan waits for Bubba. And let's hope that these guys sporting you congratulate you one another. What a pair of racers they are. James Bubba Stewart and Stefan Everts, a pair of legends. Across the finishing line, the winner, Stefan Everts. Third for David Philippartz, and fourth place. I think we'll go to Tunnel Leoc. He's just set his fastest lap of the race on the penultimate lap, Stefan Everts style. And uh, if, if Stefan's going to do a lap of honour, I do wish that Bubba Stewart would as well. What a race. And what about the MX2 guys who weren't in that final confrontation? Stefan Everts, well, he's never been the greatest loser in the world, but I tell you what, he's a terrific winner. Gets a hug from his wife, or partner, at, all, at least. So Stefan Everts comes home, uh, the winner from James Stewart, David Philippats. Steve Ramon makes fifth place for Belgium, ahead of Jonathan Barragan of Spain, Sebastian Porcel of France. And Josh Coppins of New Zealand. And I think that was a really crucial final lap by Coppins. I think it might have clawed that third place back for the Kiwis. Ben Towney will be bouncing if that's the case. Only the third time that they will ever have done it. Congratulations to Martin Mainsbridge of Bike It and Steve Dixon of Dixon Yamaha for having uh, had the audacity and the nerve and even somehow the resources to put on an event like this. Oh, folks, you could take your litter home with you. Look at that. What a cleaning up operation we're going to have here over the next few days. But Matterley Basin may perhaps have established itself now as a Grand Prix venue after that fabulous uh, set two. Everts wins it from Stewart and Philippats. 
Leoc, and look at all the different, every single different nationality virtually uh, represented there. Billy McKenzie, unlucky, dropped to 10th place on uh, the penultimate lap, just ahead of Carl Nunn, the two British boys finishing together. At Suter, finishing ahead of uh, Cody, Co uh, Cody Cooper. Cody Cooper gets another place as well, and it could be, therefore, that uh, Cooper's done enough to really ensure that New Zealand have got themselves on the rostrum. But I tell you what, these guys know that they're on the rostrum. <laughs> James Stewart on the left, and on the right, Ivan Tedesco, and in between them, Ryan Philip Porto. And uh, being inserted between them is Tedesco's motorcycle. You did all that we needed to. We're good. You're good. Yep, it's the usual American conflab going on. Nice to see James Stewart smiling. He may have uh, been beaten in that last race, but as Roger De Costa so appropriately pointed out, it's the race result that matters. The youth stream boss, Giovanni, uh, uh, Giuseppe Longo, can't resist getting up on the rostrum there. But really, I think what the crowd want to see are the stars. And look at this. The new Mexican on the right-hand side, the heavily tattooed Ivan Tedesco, decides that it's time to show off those tattoos. And while many, many thousands of people head for home, look what a magnificent sight. Uh, a lot of the crowd stay behind to check out the guys on the podium. As I've, I figure that we've got the USA winning ahead of Belgium and New Zealand, but I wish, uh, I, I'm looking forward to it being confirmed. And as for where the Brits finished, well, to be honest, I've got no idea. Yves de Maria finally got past Nev Bradshaw into 15th place. And Jos Lansu, Rookie of the Year in America last year, 24th for Estonia. Colton Fasciati, a disappointing ride for the uh, electrifying teenage Canadian who will doubtlessly back at the Sheffield Supercross where he's won several times before to take on Jeremy McGrath and David Vilman on October the 28th. So finally, this European crowd, and look at the size of it, gets to see, well, uh, all, in all fairness to Ivan Tedesco, two American legends who they've only ever really been able to see in photographs and in videos and DVDs. Ryan Villapoto and James Bubba Stewart. <laughs> the winners of the Motocross of Nations 2000, and that ought to read 2006. Just a little mistake there, a little slip of the pen. And that means that they are now the leaders 17 times, and that all since 1981. 1981 through 1993. 1996, 2000, and 2005. And finally, again in 2006, the United States of America have won the World Team Motocross Championships. Belgium in second place. My goodness me, I was right about New Zealand. Fantastic ride by both Josh Coppins after his fall and Cody Cooper. Snatch it from Italy with France fifth and Great Britain, I thought, had sneaked into the top six, and they did. Well done, fellas. So sixth place, despite having that wretched DNF for Tommy Searle in the first race when he was flattened in the first turn. In fact, almost before he reached the first turn, means that Great Britain have salvaged sixth place here at Matterley Basin. And this was uh, a, that was a fantastic start. Did we have the camera in the right place to see David Philippart's motor up the inside of Josh Coppins and grab the whole shot when it looked for a moment as if the lizard had it all his own way. In fact, Coppins sucked back to about fourth place in the first couple of turns as Philippart and Billy McKenzie. Now, what would have happened if McKenzie could have got himself to the front? It would have been interesting to see because he worked hard too. Meanwhile, Coppins... At it with his old adversary, Stefan Everts. But Josh eventually made a crucial mistake when he looked to have that second place. Stewart was coming through to challenge the front three when Josh went down as simply as that. It was such a simple, almost elementary error. It could have cost New Zealand dear, but typically the fanatically determined and uh, focused Josh Coppins forced back sufficiently far up the table. Look at Bubba Stewart to make it a good day for the New Zealanders. What a combination in riding stars we had between the cool, suave Stefan Everts 
and the emphatically aggressive James Bobber Stewart. And you can see that David Philippards, well, he's learned, he's really learned a lot already from Stefan Everts. So having Stefan to guide him next year is going to be a, a major bonus. This is Tanel Leok forcing his way through past Steve Ramon. But fortunately, this man had done it enough for Belgium because two points from two rides men, meant that the Belgians had it. The winner, Stefan Everts, going out in style for his international motocross career, but still with his Western Beats race career to conclude on October the 22nd. <laughs> we won't be carrying that on uh, Eurosport, you'll have to go. It's extremely inexpensive to get in. And uh, Gary Ho Gareth Hockey and the boys will welcome you down there, believe me. We'll have a really great time, especially with Joel Smets, and Tyler Rattray and last year's winner Paul Edmondson also in the fray. Josh Coppins, Cody Cooper and Ben Townley. BT said he desperately wanted to be on the rostrum. And boy, oh boy, he's made it there. And Shane King, the 1996 world champion, five world 500cc champion with uh, KTM, is also joining him on the roster. And Russell Burling, who I haven't seen since he was uh, looking after Craig Coleman in the 125 and 250 GPs back in uh, 1979, 80 and 81. Stephen Everts with his son Liam arrives on the rostrum with Kevin Strybos and Steve Ramon and their Steve manager, the utterly legendary, I'll just stub out this cigarette on your handlebars before I beat you, Joel Robert. I get the impression that Stevan doesn't even mind too much that the team championship went to the USA because he won two races. You know what these guys are like? They may not be team players, they're winners. And from the USA, James Bubba Stewart, Ryan Villapoto, Ivan Tedesco. Tedesco, the second time he's won, having also been involved at Erne 12 months ago. So he's already knocking up quite a fine record in the motocross de Nation. Two, two raced and two won. There's Georges Bay in the orange KTM shirt, just walking across the forefront there. Five-time world champion himself and, of course, a former winner of the Motocross des Nations with uh, Belgium. The first time, actually, at Farley Castle in 1980. Amazing. All the connections. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And old man Zerbi, the uh, president of the FIM, comes on to congratulate a few people. Josh Coppins and Cody Cooper, they did a good job, didn't they? The Lizard, who will be, re be racing, of course, for the Stefan Everts, the ex-Stefan Everts, Michaela Rinaldi team in 2007 and must be a bit of a pre-race favourite for the MX1 World Championship. But let's face it, we've seen some dynamic racing from the guys who will be challenging him. Now, I sincerely hope that isn't the Peter Chamberlain trophy because that should go to the winner and it's uh, gone to Belgium, who are second. So I've got a feeling that the Peter Chamberlain trophy, yes, folks, it's a British trophy, will go to the Americans. America first really made a showing here at Husqvarna in Sweden in 1974. Jim Pomeroy, Brad Lackey, Marty Tripes and jo jamming Jimmy Wynat finished in second place behind the Swedes but here is the illustrious Peter Chamberlain trophy that Roger da Costa first got his hands on at Farley Castle just up the road really in 1969 and here he is bless him as team manager of the USA handing it over to the Americans they've got it to take back home again <laughs> wonderful they had to use Wolfgang Zerb and Giuseppe Longo to present those trophies. They couldn't find a suitable um, cel cel celebrity. Should have asked me, fellas. I'd have done it for you.
there's Ricky Carmichael in the foreground. He's here, even if injured and unable to ride. Good to see RC on the rostrum. So the Stars and Stripes celebrate another victory, a momentous victory, the 17th, the only nation to win this magnificent trophy 17 times now since its inception in 1947. Well, we Brits will just have to come back and win it next year, won't we? But incidentally, it's, it's in the United States for only the second time in its history next year. Joel Robert congratulates Ricky Carmichael. And look at that, what a lovely picture. Carmichael on the right, Everts on the left, ten times champions of the world and America. And boy, had we been looking forward to those two impressive men going at one another today. But what a race we've had, regardless. And I thought Ricky not being able to ride might have weakened the American team. I've got a feeling I was wrong. Take your hat off, my boy. It'll fit. And the MX2 class winner, the rookie who came over here. We didn't know what to expect, but he brought it home. MX2 class winner. The MX2 class winner, individual class winner. And uh, the dear lady can't find him. It's Ryan Villapoto, of course, of the USA, who has two number one plates. He'd be so, uh, clost he would be so clogged up with number one plates. But we keep well, getting told that that's Wolfgang Schroeb, but can, can we find out who this lady is? Brian Villaporto, he's... What's going to happen between him and James Bubba Stewart on the right of the top deck of the rostrum in coming years in America, eh? For Stefan Everts, he's got a whole new challenge ahead of him. Well, not just the Western Beach race, but... KTM team managership, the overall individual winner of MX1 at his final motocross of nations Stefan Everts takes a bow Joel Robert what a gentleman on the left hand side these two men absolute legends back home in Belgium and uh, this isn't going to make them any less so the Belgians finished second and they are, it's their 50th ever podium finish at the Motocross des Nations. How good is that? The Belgians then, Stefan Evert celebrates the 50th Belgian podium out of 60 runnings of the Motocross of Nations. But America take the spoils. Well done, New Zealand in third place. And for me, Jack Bernicle, well, what an afternoon it's been here in the United Kingdom. Hope you've enjoyed it. Bye-bye. Next week, live on Eurosport 2. Hockey's World Cup now sees the women.